Hey, Donnie Walker here. Yeah, let's talk about use saws when they come in. You know, they're, this one's uh, wants me to port it and muffler's already been done. It's got a non-rev limiter ignition on it. It's a 372X torque. And I just want to talk a bit about 372s and 572s this morning. You know, this is a saw I just got, had the bar and chain on it. You know, it's it's been well used every day with a tree service. Just want to show you, show you some good stuff on 372s and Huskies in general, especially their air filter system. Best system you can get, you know. No fines down in the throat here at all. You know, this type of flock filter system, the heavy-duty cartridge works great. I don't like the aftermarket ones. I guess they're cheap enough, though, for, for people that need extra filters. So, you know, good thing to keep up on. Ha buy one then and have it as extra filter. I do not like the compression releases in the head. That one's got some residue around it. I bet you it's leaking a bit. I'll be putting a plug in that. Um, you can just see the different, you know, when I take a saw apart when it's used, I check everything over. You know, the throttle cable's coming back properly. You know, um, obviously I'm going to clean this thing up head to toe. It's got the black coil on it, the non-rev limiter ignition. 544047001 is the number on the coil, but on the package it might be different. So I'm just looking at stuff on here, what's what's going on with it. You know, it's just typically dirty as usual. You know, this type of cap too, you know, every time you take these off, you know, stuff gets into your tank, right? Falls in there as you take it off. So, you know, you don't want to clean inside the tank once in a while too, not just the fuel filter. Rinse it, rinse it out of there, uh, all those fine dust too, because it'll start clogging your next fuel filter you put in. So what else am I looking at? I took the clutch bell off just to look down in there. Everything looks okay. You know, Husky's got strong clutches. You hardly ever go through these clutch springs. You know, very rare do they break. I've seen saws last a lifetime of the saw and, and they haven't broke. Typical Huskies, dogs loose. That's one thing you guys got to take care of. Be checking those dogs once in a while. This starts rattling like this. Now those bolts are going to wear those holes. You're going to have to put Healy coils in there or the proper steel inserts that I like to use. He's got the steel bar on here. It's got the steel adapter. So you would have been running one more driver in the chain. Or you simply groove the bar out so it slides back farther. I've showed you that on previous video. He's got the caps and screens like we use here in BC for forest regulation and, and compensation board. They work fine. Gives you extra half, just over half a horsepower with just this muffler gain. You know, I'll check stuff over too, like on the starter. Make sure the rope's in good shape. The spring isn't broken. Start, for a while, Husky had some really bad starter springs. Okay, every couple weeks, guys were going through them. It was crazy there for a while. So, anyways, that's the, that's the 372X torque. And let's talk a little bit about the 572. Last night, I was out for dinner with my friend of mine, Doug Munn. And his lovely gal, Liana, it was her birthday, and she also just won an award for um, uh, one of the best, BC's best care care persons. Yeah, really cool. So anyways, um, talked to Dougie quite a bit about um, the 572s. His crew runs them, um, and they, they love them. You know, they've ran the X-Torque 372s, which they never really... Um, liked of course because they always ran hot rod regular 372s from me for years when they were contractors um, now they work for a union company so they 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 run the saws that are supplied for them so the saws that are supplied for them are 572s and i was asking dougie last night you know what are they you know for 572 what do you you know they run 32 inch bars on them with ground chain and they're stock with just a muffler mod and the mod that I do to the um, side of the cover here. The cover here has a hole in it to get the hot air passed, but when they're falling with these saws, when they have the full wrap on them, the saws up, that hot air blows in their face. So I put a muffler cap here, I rivet it onto there, and it redirects that air off that top cover. Um, like he says, 45 minutes on a tank of fuel, uh, smoothest saw he's ever ran, and has decent power, you know, because he has a good ground chain. So a lot, of, a lot of people out there, you know, bad mouth that size of saw, saying, "Why? Well, there's no way you can run a size that size of bar on a saw like that." 
Well, we have hip pin for years here and it works for us. And, and the biggest thing is, is the chain. You gotta have a good chain. A good hand file or good chisel grind makes a big difference in any saw. So you can use a smaller CC saw with a long bar. And they run the still light bars too, so that's a little different as well. But I just wanted to say about that, you know, I talked a little, little bit about the 572 the other day. And uh, I just wanted to just just, just talk about that as he talked to me about it. He says, Donnie, yeah, that's a, I never want to run anything else. You know, my hands have gotten better from running it. And ergonomically, it fits the tree nice. It's got that nice back handle grip, which I told you about. Just, just a great unit. They're in snow right now, so he might, um, he was going to work this morning, so hopefully he got enough, uh, enough melted there that he can make a, make a trail up to where he's falling. You know, these guys now are, are falling in very dangerous areas, very rocky and, and, and steep conditions, because most of the logging here is done now with mechanical machinery, uh, which is fine, you know. I do, we do processor chain and sharpening for that, that stuff as well at the Walker Saw Shop. But, you know, the hand fallers are still needed for the oversized stuff and the stuff that the machine can't get. So now they're, now they're forced into, you know, walking up these mountains and the rock and stuff. And if there's snow, you don't know where you're stepping or what you're stepping on. So it's easy to bend, break an ankle or, or strain an ankle or, you know, a knee. So, yeah, they, they work hard. They make good money, but probably not enough. You know, things are tight these days, you know. Everything's gone up in price. Food, gas, gas is ridiculous here right now. We're heading to Vancouver tomorrow to actually get a car for Shelly. Her old Beatles finally uh, gave up the ghost. It needs the clutch, it needs this, it needs that. It's not worth spending the money on. We're just gonna sell it. And we're getting a newer one now with a 2.5 motor in it. But anyways, you don't need to hear about that. You wanna hear about sauce. So I just wanna talk about like the 572. Yes, it would have been nice if Husky made them 75 cc. I still think there's going to be a new Husky coming out. Not exactly sure on that, but um, I hope they build something in the 75 to, to 79 cc range. Something to compete with the, like the 4 uh, 500i, um, the um, you know 7310 Echo. Um, what else you got? A little 400 still. That MS 400. That thing's a real whippy whipper snipper, you know. Nice little saw. Just talking to Dino Joe about that yesterday. I actually had a good conversation with him about some pipe stuff. I'm um, getting some uh, pipes made from CPI and um, just wanted to see how his dyno poles are with the pipe, where the best power was, with the pipes that he was testing. Anyways, yeah, TGAF, man. Everyone have a great weekend. Get out with your kids, have some fun, go do some wood cutting, get your lawnmowers and your garden ready for the year. Just have a fabulous weekend. It's going to be really nice here on the coast. And, uh, yeah, wait for the next storm, eh? <laughs> Anyways, have a great day. Bye now.